guys, Matt here with Matt's Reef Tank. As promised, I am revisiting Leo's Reef Tank. If you are uh, watching this after watching the first video that I recorded before this one, you have seen him do a aquascaping, uh, take out a bunch of water and uh, start to redecorate. Uh, but I had to go. Uh, I ended up doing a lot of traveling and what has it been? About a couple of months, right? Yeah. It's been quite some time, but we have returned to visit Leo's Reef Tank. So one of his goals was actually to uh, reduce the amount of rock, yeah. get rid of Aptasia, yes. and kind of uh, clean up his tank a little bit. And just a quick note, a little bit later, we're gonna show you a secret for uh, getting rid of Aptasia that uh, Leo has discovered. Yeah. We're actually gonna test this theory. We wanna show, we wanna show the people how to kill the Aptasia with the butterfly fish. The master, my friend over the pole from Thailand, he teaches me everything. Apparently it works pretty well. We'll find out. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, this is going to be a little bit about what the tank looks like now, but really this is an overview of his entire reef room and drop-off tank, yeah. right? So uh, let's walk through his uh, reef tank setup. Give me a little bit of background. How long have you had these tanks? How did you get started? Yeah, this factory, I own this factory and I have this uh, fish tank, uh, I think over six years. Okay, the big one. The big one, yeah, okay. six years ago. And then I have the low tank, then the bread tank last year. The big tank here is how many gallons? Uh, it's about 500 gallons. About, does yeah. that include the... Including the sun and the low tank. In the including meeting. the yeah. okay so this is 500 over here over here you've got a frag tank how many gallons is that three and a half three, 350 gallons yeah. and then uh the tank you don't see here is it is in in your main it's office drop off tank about 300 gallons 300 yeah. gallons now the drop off tank is the newest right it's only been half a year half a year but but really just a few months right yeah like i just opened about three or yeah three months we'll take a look at that at the end of this video but uh that is a very interesting tank because your your sump and and all of that was built by you right yeah yeah it's pretty inc incredible i like your sump it's, it's very yeah. unique so first let's take a look at your 500 gallon over here the oldest tank So I started this fish tank about six years ago, before just uh, like the field piece coral and the fish. And Did you build this tank yourself? No, I had someone build a fish tank for me. I set up all the systems myself. Some of the special uh, attributes for his 500 gallon is, uh, it's got an interesting porthole here. Yeah, I stick this myself, <laughs> this is my idea. Yeah, yeah, it's very cool. When you look through the porthole, you kind of almost feels like you're, you're looking it's through a submarine tank. window, yeah. you know? Um, the other thing is your front pane, pane of glass here is on an angle. Yeah. Uh, why did you do that? And you know, there's a lot of people that come in the first time they saw uh, such big, this big fish tank and uh, they would feel a little bit heavy yeah. because the glass is very thick. Yeah. And uh, the reason they feel uh, heavy because the, the angle they saw the fish tank. Mm -hmm. If they go down a little bit down, okay. yeah, they will feel more comfortable. That's why I like this for the, like, the people that come in. The bit, my fish tank. So. Now you said your your tank is glass. Why did you choose glass over plastic, uh, acrylic? In the China, the glass is more easy to find. Now, yeah, and uh, the cost less, and not easy to, to scratch. Well, can I ask you about that? Like, how much did this tank cost to build? Just the tank. Just tank. Uh, for me, it's special price. I know. Now. I know. If you wanted to buy this tank in China, how much do you think you'd spend on it? I think. Uh, Seven thousand to ten thousand. RMB. RMB. Yeah. Okay. When you buy fish and corals in in Ningbo, China, where else? Where do they get them from? I used to have the fish store in Ningbo okay. five years. I know. Six years ago. <laughs> yeah, six years ago. So I buy the coral from Guangzhou. Guangzhou. Yeah. This is the biggest market in China. Yeah. They import from overseas. The fish almost from Indonesia and the Philippines, and the coral from Indonesia almost. But some of my coral from Fiji. 
This is a 500 gallon, and the sump, and the tank, and your sand bed. Yeah. So why don't we take a look at, at particulars? Uh, mm -hmm. First of all, you've got a lot of lights here. Yeah. What what kind of what is your lighting setup? And there's two. Why? There's two different lights. Right? One is X Marine LED light, and one is next uh, So I put two together and just show the. Make sure my tank is bright enough. Yeah. And make sure my coral can grow hell. I see they're all LEDs. Yeah, it's all LEDs. And your uh, SPS growth is pretty good. Yeah, very fast. Because LED is very easy to screw the water and yeah. they're very powerful. Yeah. So it, they cannot cover the big range, so I use many pieces. Nine pieces, I think. Mean. <laughs> I mean, when, uh, when I had Matt's Reef Tank, the big one in my office, a lot of those corals were from your tank and from your setup. Yeah. And it always pissed me off because I would bring them back, maybe I had some extra or something, and I would put them back in here, and they would grow like 10 times faster than they would in my tank, in this yeah. tank. And uh, I think that it, it, it lends itself to show how, how good the lighting is in here to grow the SPS coral. How often do you do water changes? Uh, I used to do the water change uh, once a week, okay. about 15 percent. You know, this is huge fish tank. I used to change two bucket water, yeah. so the big bucket. I mean, and I mean, one of the reasons why that is so uh, easy for him to do these big water changes is because his water change thing is literally right here on the other side. How much water can you make every day? Uh, 400 gallons. 400 gallons. So he can make 400 gallons every single day to re replenish his tanks. And you don't got to worry about a mess. I mean, this room is yeah. your hobby room. So yeah, I can do whatever I want. So <laughs> yeah. even There's care. no wife yelling at you, ah, you got the salt water all over the hardwood floors. You know, normally I'm yelling, my wife, <laughs> go out, like this. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's me and my fish time. Yeah. All right, so before we go under the hood and take a look at what filters the water for this 500 gallon monster, let's take a look at uh, some of the coral that uh, enjoy the clarity of the water that he produces. So um, tell me a little bit about your setup, some special things. Give me a little history on, on what you got here. Okay, so uh, last time I tell you about my aquascaping, so there will be the three islands. So this part and the two part. I put more individual islands here. There's uh -huh. more space for the water for the yeah, open, open space for the yeah. fish to swim. And on the right side, there's long, big, huge LPS. Uh, the reason, because I keep there for many, many years. So I don't want them. Yeah, they move the home. They know that, that that's yeah. space. And some SPS from Fiji, and I just bought two week, two months ago. Uh -huh. So actually the Fiji fishery they close all the fish and coral export. What? So I'm lucky. What does that mean? So Fiji has restricted all exports of yeah, SPS and, corals? No, including the fish. Everything? Yeah, everything. They're trying to rebuild the reefs and then they'll do it again or I'm not finished? Sure. I'm not sure. For now it's, like for Hawaii, now, you know, no more Fiji stuff. Yeah, no more Fiji stuff. But like Hawaii, they close the fish export. Okay. So the group SPS is from the local. Yeah, color, everything is perfect. Yeah. The burn nest, I do a lot of red, the burn nest, and they go crazy fast. Yeah, yeah. If you watched the uh, Matt's Reef Tank way, way back, the beginning, that first bird's nest that grew like crazy, yeah. that was one of uh, Leo's. Yeah, and that Kenya tree is from Thailand. Mm. I, can't, I can't carry it back to China. <laughs> uh, how many fish? species do you think you have in the tank right now? Oh, I did not calculate. Uh, 20, 30? Yeah. Different types of, I think, of fish? Yeah, coral and 30. Yeah. And how many different types of coral do you think you have? Not many. SPS, uh, you know, everything. Every different type. I think uh, more than 40 or 50. Yeah. 40 or 50. And how many invertebrate species do you think you have? Shrimps and... and uh, I just got two shape. Uh, two screen shape and... Uh, you got a lot of uh, sea sand sifting yeah. sea stars, sea cucumbers. sea cucumbers, and another starfish right there. What is your favorite uh, coral? If you had to pick a coral and get rid of all the other ones, which one would you want to keep? Oh, it's, 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 it's all my, <laughs> it's like, your all baby. my baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the SPS, at this moment, I think this 
This one, that's beautiful. From Fiji, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's really like bright, really beautiful. Green, it's very nice. What's your fastest and most successful coral? I think it's LPS. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. the KR3, okay. about 10 times bigger. Yeah. Now, when I shut down Matt's reef tank, I gave Leo all of my uh, oh, corals. Friend. Yeah. So one of my favorites and, and the figurehead and the matriarch coral of all of my corals has been the brain. And that looks like it's just growing like crazy. It's really, really Yeah, wonderful. I give it enough space for growth. Yeah. This whole system is more than just this 500 gallons. It's a deep sand bed tank. So let's, yeah. let's take a look at that and then we'll look down below. Okay, so this is uh, your deep sand bed. Now, I remember, how long have you had this one? Uh, three years. Three years. Yeah. I think I remember when you the first set years. this up. Yeah, like, like you weren't really interested in having so much. You used to be a really big fan of the glass bottom tank. Yeah, you know, right? can you remember the second video on your video about yeah. this man? And the water just getting milky. Yeah. Because, yeah. because I moved the sand. Yeah. yeah. But now it's, now it's doing really well. well. I was talking about the, the tree. Okay, so yeah, yeah, you've got some plants in there. Yeah. Actually, they suck the NO3 and PO4. Yeah. I used to have this tree one time, but they all died. Yeah. Because when I bought, they already have the leaf. leaf. Uh, but now I just bought the, for that. the stems. Yeah. So now they grow. Yeah, I mean these are really popular type of filtration uh, yeah. using mango, 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 <laughs> mangroves <laughs> to to insert into your filtration system. Now my question to you would be: Have you seen a benefit? Have you seen your tank improve when you use these? Because a lot of people might be interested to try this, but does it really help? Oh, okay. in your opinion? Uh, I think that yeah, really help. Uh, you know, turtle fish. Mm. The oh no, the turtle fish, Julian spawn. Uh, he used a lot. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I think it's quite neat. And yeah. They really help. I, I think. So you have the deep sand bed with a lot of SPS. You have some clams in there. Oh, buttons. Buttons and buttons and and clownfish. These two clowns. How long have you had these two clowns? Four years. Okay, so your main tank, and then you've got your sand bed. Let's look at what he's got under the hood, which in itself is, is pretty awesome. So let's take a look. Okay, so uh, I, I, I would break your filtration system, or at least your sump, into three compartments. You come in through this section, right? Yeah. So this is where I all the skimmer. What's the, what's the pump that you have circulating the water in the system? I use the Equi-B, UB5 A solid. He's, he's circulating about 2,500 gallons a minute. And on his first stage here, he's got, what do we got? We've got a, uh, a Cove brand, 300. a 320. And uh, how often do you uh, fill it up? I mean, how, how much work is it doing? Depending how on feeding. Often? Normally one, one week. Okay. After I feed, they always work very fast. Yeah, yeah. I've got a uh, Cove brand sk skimmer on my tank and, and uh, it works very well. What else you got here? Uh, this is a uh, medium reactor. Yeah. They will uh, reduce the NO3 and PO4. Mm. And I put the two little fish uh, medium inside my medium reactor. Okay, and then uh, why do you have this small little internal uh, running here? Yeah, yeah it's a new one. So I just turned on about one hour ago. Yeah. Yeah, it's new model, 120. Okay. Yes, yeah, I just want to I just want to show the people <laughs> like this smallest skimmer and it's still very powerful. Yeah, cool. I think for a 100 gallon fish tank, it's easy to deal. Yeah, yeah. All right, and then we uh, move over to your frag tank. This is kind of neat because it does double duty. It allows you to have a really nice frag tank, but I'm sure as the water moves from uh, right to left, you have a chance for some filtration to go on too, right? Actually, this is for the, uh, not for the frag. 
But I don't have space for my friend. Yeah. They grow too fast. This would have been like a refugian, right? Yeah, a refugian. yeah, yeah, yeah. My question to Leo is, do you sell these frags or are they just for fun? No, just for fun. You know, they take a lot of time to, yeah, yeah, yeah. to my hobby. Even Chinese New Year. Every day I stay, uh, stay here. You're going to have to start a store here again. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Maybe See, I, I met Leo when he used to, I met you when you had Cove store. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, you Seven sold years. the store and now the store is managed by somebody else. Uh, but do you have, uh, you might start up another one in the future? Not really, I don't have time. But you're gonna keep growing these frags? You gotta do something with it. You know, my frags, that show is more than a shop. Yeah. The other shop. Yeah. Oh, there's a cold calcium reactor. So we will have new one soon, but this one is the older one. Um, they supply the calcium and the cage for my tank for the lot of SPS and the frag growing. So okay. it's very important. Yeah. So that's his uh, big main display setup. I, I guess the only question that would be left would be uh, about feeding. So let's talk about that for a sec. So what do you uh, do for feeding? I mean, his fish have always been very healthy. And you can see right now, they're very excited. They see, they see, pa they see Papa Bear. Yeah. <laughs> I feed the fish pellet. Yeah, every day, every morning when I come. Okay. Um, I feed cold fish pellet. <laughs> yeah, of course. Obviously. The medium size and large size. Okay. Because my fish is quite old and big. Yeah, yeah I, would, I would feed about four or five spoons for this fish tank. Okay. Yeah. He used to have a really big, uh, was that a snowflake? Zebra eel. Zebra eel. Yeah. Uh, but it, without your zebra eel, do you still feed uh, uh, like shrimp. shrimp and this type of food, or now it's just Sometimes, pellets? now it's just pellet. I don't okay. want to feed the shrimp because it takes, it takes time to prepare and, and do everything. Oh yeah. And your pellets are yeah well rounded, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> enough for my fish. If, so. Yeah, yeah. Take a, take a look at the fish, and if you if yeah, you like uh, one show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All the fish right. just waiting for the yeah. yeah. Uh, this is your big display. Uh, now let's turn to the other side of this room where he's got his uh, major frag display tank. Yes. Let's take a look. Okay, so this is the other side of the room. It's, it's not a huge room, but it is it's pretty big for a guy that's turning it into a reef room. This is his frag tank setup. Now, when I first met you, you didn't have this sort of a setup. This yeah. has been something that's kind of new for you. But uh, you have upgraded some things and improved some things. Explain a little bit about your frag tanks. Hi, so there's two uh, frag tanks they link together. It's 350 gallons together. So I use four LED light for this tank, and there's a lot of frag here, about 400 pieces or 300 pieces. There's four wave maker on back side. I can I, that's why I can see on the front side. It's very clean. I can see everything. I put all the power supply, all the controller on the background. So another 350 or 400 piece frag. So I use just two wave maker on two sides. This difference, okay. I just want to try different way to make my frag strong because water movement is very important for the frag growing. So I make the frag holder myself. It's very clean and uh, use the frag, frag, frag ground. Okay, so you've got frags in here, but you also have a couple of other things, right? You have a, a yeah, I have a couple clown. of the brown fish is from my store. It's six years. They're breeding already six years. I will show you. They have the egg in the middle of two enemy. When do you think those eggs will hatch? What does that mean? When will the eggs open? Eggs. Oh. Normally they take eight to nine days, so two more days. 
Yeah. And what are you going to do with them when they hatch? Are you going to try to quarantine them and raise no, them? No, I tried eight years ago. They need more time. I have two kids, so <laughs> I don't have time. So they're just going to be fed to the other yeah, fish? Yeah, they will, they will throw yeah, on yeah. the bottom, so uh, to the sun. So. Poor guys. Yeah. What do you got under underneath here? Mangrove. <laughs> About 70 or something. And I use two return pump, Echo B return pump, UP5000 DC. It's very really silent. Yes, and it's a really, really quiet system. Yeah, I use two piece Cove skimmer, I200. You can see the bubble yeah. and the dust. It's really work very hard. I use a little bit of dry rock put on the overflow and I put the sponge inside one side of the tank so it's easy to change the sponge. I just open the open. Okay so you have two tanks here and then both tanks have the drop off at the right side. Yes. Right? So the drop off is here and then there's a drop off over at the end of that tank. Very cool. And then like I said his his uh, water uh, fresh water making system is over there. How much water do you uh, lose every uh, every day you think? I think about about bucket. Like nice. seven gallon. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so now we've moved into a, uh, this is your main office area, right? Yes. So his executive office is behind this wall. So this is kind of your break wall between the uh, main office area and your personal meeting executive yeah. office and meeting room yeah. where you do uh, your big deals to sell all your Cove products all over the world. This was not always like this, right? Yeah. You, I remember, you know what? I remember, we used, I came here in a fish group meeting yeah. and I took pictures of what used to be it used to be just a rectangular tank yeah longer yeah but uh, used to fill this wall and so you decided to change it and what did you decide to do you created this system all by yourself you know this is drop drop off tank it's mm. quite popular in the world at mm. this moment about actually about two years ago yeah I set up this tank one and a half years ago and I opened it four okay. months ago the size of this fish tank about two and two point six meters the aquascaping I use some right from and uh, not pretty good now. I will use some artificial color to extend the right rock soon. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So Phil P's giant tank here. It's illegal in China. <laughs> really? Why is it? Why is it? It's illegal. Where does it come from? Oh, it's local. Oh. Yeah, it's illegal for sale. So. Oh. Okay. What? Are, what I was talking about this fish with the yellow tail. So actually, it's a tropical fish. But I put in my saw fish tank. They like they can live survive. In they can live yeah. in a boat. So I put here about thirty-five piece and my powder brew kill about <laughs> twenty piece. So. But they grow like grow very fast, double size. Yeah. So these fish are designed for fresh or salt water. Can yeah. live in both. Yeah, can be both. And I use one big wave maker hit this side and go the overflow. Yeah. Okay. Now. Uh, and I also use one. Eco tag right down here. So make sure there's enough water movement. Okay. And another piece we make right here. The light I use the Max Pack R6, the new one. Yeah, quite good. Yeah. I mean quite the size is very it's perfect for my fish tank. The sum uh, used a cray and I made myself. Just for the water overflow, uh, I use the sponge, I can use a filter bag. Then the skimmer, you can see it's really dirty. So yeah, it's ready to go. Yeah, this, this, this fish tank, I feel a lot, so it works very hard. And refugion, X Marine LED light, I use a lot of the, the great algae. I can feed the fish right down. And then return, return pump. Oh, I use external pump returning. For this section, I can put the sponge to stop the, the tiny bubble and I want to show you like this so I can put down 
to stop the tiny bubble to return to the main tank. And how how powerful is the pump, uh, the return pump here? Oh, the return pump is UPA hundred, uh, UPA thousand. Okay. It's just fifty watt. Okay. It's from Germany, Aqua B. So yeah. it's very quiet, silent, and yeah. power safe. Just fifty watt, two thousand five hundred gallon. Mm. Yeah. Now I noticed that you have this side open, and the other side has the beautiful moldings and stuff. Do you ever plan to close this off, or is this? Gonna no, be open like this. It's like an open space. It's easy for for me to do everything, and now I can be on the top. And the yeah. cool thing is that this is actually your uh, your conference room. Yeah. So your conference room where you have all your products displayed, and you have a really open system, so you can actually see the product working, which is yeah. kind of neat. What is that fish called again? Oh, it's trigger fish. Trigger, trigger, yeah. and a little frag plate there. Yeah, you know, there's no space for my for my fish room. <laughs> And uh, yeah, isn't it a glorious problem to have too much coral? Yeah, maybe I need to stop <laughs> to give a lot of reefer. And then if you guys know me at all, you'll know that that white fish there, the white clown is, is mine. And uh, that anemone, that's Bob. Bob is living here in, the, uh, in, in uh, Leo's main office tank here. And uh, we've got uh, a couple of, uh, these, are your, these are your butterflies. And what do your butterflies do? They kill appetite. <laughs> Okay, so those butterflies are his aptasia control system. And uh, you, you sometimes put them in the tank on the other side and you cycle them around, right? Yeah, sometimes, but not much. Okay. You know, before I kill them and I cannot want anyone yeah. to keep my aptasia problem. When did you find out they were so voracious for eating your aptasia? Uh, when I put, just put in my this tank, yeah. I got a lot of aptasia before, just put in. 10 yeah. seconds, they start walking. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. 10 seconds? I don't believe it. Can okay, you show I'll show you. <laughs> Holy shit. I, that was so fast. That is a very good Aptasia eating, uh, killing solution. And it was funny because one of the Aptasia they ripped off and floated past these, uh, these Brazilian, whatever these Amazon freshwater yeah. hybrids and uh, it ate they the eat. Aptasia. Yeah. You know, Aptasia is such a common problem for all of us that yeah. uh, to have a fish that takes care of that problem with enthusiasm is pretty cool. Well, uh, that is uh, it for uh, your setups. That's pretty nice. Now, Leo, because he does this business with reef tanks, you have connections with reef tankers all over the world. Uh, in maybe Taiwan? Yes. Maybe uh, Thailand. Uh, Thailand and all throughout Southeast Asia. He's going to be feeding me in intel on cool places to visit. And while I travel around the world, this will not be the last Matt's Reef Tank. Hopefully, yeah. I'll be able to investigate some uh, really cool wholesalers, distributors, and personal reef tanks as I travel around the world yes. with Leo's help. Yeah. So thanks, man. You're welcome. <laughs> and maybe we'll check out uh, his system in, in the future, but we'll let it grow and, and yeah, we'll sure. see what sort of new stuff you'll okay. be able to show us. So thanks again. Thanks.